Well, what attracted me to this project was Billie Holiday. I mean, she's an extraordinary American artist, one of the greatest artists that we've had um, of the last century and still is. Uh, her life has been a mixture of a lot of myth, maybe a lot of misinformation. And I think as we re-examine her life, particularly today in the wake of the opioid and drug crises that we've had, forever, it seems, in this country, um, and the criminalization of it, how we might have viewed her life through different eyes, knowing what we know about addiction these days. And I think we would have had more compassion. Um, can you imagine if she hadn't been criminalized and if she actually received the help that she had, what might her life have been had, had been? Um, but in spite of all that, how her spirit, how her artistry transcended so much in her life and and she still had the ability to to share her gift with us. And so I, I wanted uh, personally a deeper investigation of, of a little bit of her journey. She's at this, at Emerson's Bar and Grill. Um, her closest friend, Lester Young, um, just a few months earlier had passed away. And it was devastating to her. You know, at this point, she's lost her mother already. Um, she's at a point in her career where, you know, a lot of people are, are, are not coming out the way they used to. Uh, the biggest thing was her cabaret card had been taken from her uh, after she had been convicted of a felony and sent to a um, prison in West Virginia. And she didn't know this until she got out. So she could sing in, in big venues like Carnegie Hall and do concerts all over the world. But she was not allowed to perform in the intimate clubs in New York City, which was her home and where she most wanted to be. So in this story um, that's being presented tonight, it's based on the author's, uh, I, I believe a companion or friend of the author, saw her in one of her last performances shortly before she passed away in the small club, and there were only about 7 to 12 people in attendance. So this story that we're presenting is based on that event. I play Billie Holiday. Uh, the story takes place on an evening in March in Philadelphia at a little bar called Emerson's Bar and Grill, where in its heyday, Billy performed to usually packed houses. Um, in, in the story that we're presenting, this is one of the last performances of her life. Um, she's 44 years of age, about four months from the date we're performing, uh, Billy Holiday will be, uh, will be dead. So uh, this is a point in her life where she is really fighting for her life, quite literally. The addiction, um, her, you know, she does die of kidney failure and, you know, other complications from long years of, of drug uh, abuse. Um, but she still wants to sing. Um, in the play, there are lines uh, the author has written, singing is living to me and it really was it was her salvation it was a way out to me when I hear Billy sing it sounds someone's whose soul is just trying to transcend the physical limitations and and pain and suffering of of their own body of their own physical ex existence and and in a way it is so life-affirming to me um, uh, her voice. So that's that's the journey we're taking. And, and it's also a very intimate experience. You know, I'm talking to audience members. That's why they've moved the stage out and they've put tables basically in the staging and playing area. Because to her, she, you know, her, her public were her friends. You know, she was a woman that loved to be loved and needed to be loved. So it's about conveying what's happening in her life in that moment and what she's trying to do. Um, that that's the story of the night. It it has it's usually, I think, been treated as a musical, but it it does you know as Ren and I were discussing his particular vision for the piece, and um, it is a very intimate thing, and and usually it can be done with a combo and very kind of very grand and very concert esque. But what I loved about uh, Ren's 
vision of the piece and his intuition was the the intimacy of getting to more the feeling of one on one that you know you're sitting down and you're actually having a conversation with Billy and she's singing to you and with you and it's bringing back these memories and it's making you th- think of other things um so I, I really like that stripped away. It's just myself and um, my music director, Stefan Terry, who's wonderful, who plays Jimmy Powers, um, who's her companion at this part, at this time in her life. You know, she's estranged from her husband. She's lost many people in her lives, in her life that she has been closest to. And um, uh, so he's her support system at this moment. So it, it, it feels more like a play with music because she is a singer so it's absolutely appropriate to tell the story of Billie Holiday's life. Pressure. You mean to live up to people's expectations? I, I Sure that could be it if I were focused on that and initially when I got the part and you know of course seeing Audra McDonald perform and another dear friend of mine Deidre Henry who's performed it. I mean they're, they're both extraordinary artists and that I admire but at the end of the day it's it's Billy's story that's most important and for me it's how can I best be of service to honoring her story because she's the star of the show not me Billy is is the story that people have come to see and hear and that's what they expect so that my job is to give them the most truthful representation uh, that I can of and and to honor and respect her history and legacy and maybe hopefully dig for something that we didn't know about her and to find compassion and empathy and hope even in her story. Uh, some songs she didn't receive royalties for. She was paid maybe $75 for the session. And then she, uh, I was reading her autobiography and, and one friend and said, you know, Billy, you should be making a fortune off of, I can't remember if it was Lover Man or another song that she had written. I just paid $10, 10 bucks for your album. She was only paid $75 for the recording. So if you think of the thousands, the hundreds of thousands, the millions of people who've bought, you know, she should have been a millionaire how many times over and you know probably had 70 cents in her bank account um or seven dollars something like that and she had a roll of money rolled up in her thigh uh in the hospital bed that was given to a friend of hers when she passed about 750 dollars uh from an article that uh she had sold to a magazine so she could have money because she didn't have any money the process of becoming billy holiday has been an extensive one um i've worked with two vocal coaches, uh, one uh, for music, uh, Michael Scott Harris, who's been my vocal coach and helping me find placement and support and uh, of, of finding her sound musically. And I also work uh, with a wonderful dialect coach by the name of Denise Woods. And I met her when I was on the set of True Detective and she's Mahershala Ali's personal dialect coach. And she also did the coaching for the uh, Harriet Tubman film. So there were resources that she was able to use. Um, um, Finding Billy's particular sound, she grew up in uh, Philly, is her is her birthplace. And uh, so there were were things that were going on in the 1900s, um, the flu epidemic, Um, there was also um, her people came from, at least her daddy's mother who lived with Billy, when Billy was a child was a slave. Uh, from a plantation in Virginia. So there was a particular sound of the African slaves that were uh, taken to Virginia. So the dialect coach gave me um, some videos of regional dialects. And it's interesting because all the vocal placement of those slaves is exactly the same where Billy's voice is pitched, which is right in, 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 in the nasal cavity of the mask. And so these Africans have this very particular sound and also being from the South. But then there's there's some parts of it that sound like they're, they're from uh, uh, Jersey, Maryland, Baltimore, and then she did... Um, you know, living most of her life in Baltimore, Maryland, and then New York. And so it's this mixture of, of this of this area that's really interesting and and challenging to find. But um but I think we found a happy balance because the intention wasn't to do an imitation of her, but people are coming to 
no one else sounds like Billie Holiday, you know, so that that has to be acknowledged. And so that's been a big part of the work. Also, the research, watching documentaries, reading books, reading as much as I can about her. And thank God for YouTube, because there's a lot that's documented, fortunately, that we have preserved of, of her life and her music and, and, and uh, you know, her legacy. The spirit in her uh, and the optimism of of Billie Holiday and also her humor. She was a funny lady. I mean, she laughed even at tragic events in her own life. I mean, and and it's interesting. A lot of people said you, you, the, the, our perception of her is, oh, this victim, this person who is certainly, certainly, absolutely um, uh a victim of racism, of poverty, of, of being sexually assault, assaulted at 10 years of age, being taken advantage of by men, of managers, of business people, certainly the injustice of the legal system, um, being imprisoned uh, on narcotics when she really needed help. But I don't think she ever saw herself as a victim. If anything, she said she was a strong woman. If she needed to fight you, she would fight. And she, she fought as much as she could, as best as she knew how, you know, not having anything past a, an eighth grade education, you know, not knowing the legal system, thinking, always wanting and thinking the best of people, you know, not refusing representation and lawyers. And she would take the fall for drugs when really it was her companions that brought it in and they had lawyers and they were gone and nowhere to be seen. So, um... I think she was a, a really extraordinary, formidable woman. When you think about what she, what happened in her life, you know, my question was, well, how could she not turn to chemical substances or something at some point to deal with the amount of pain and trauma that she was surviving? But, um, you know, if she had had, you know, as I said before, you know, if, uh, therapy or help or some type of medical treatment you know she was astonished by the help that addicts got in Europe and she was tempted to stay in Europe and you know that might have been best for her personally and maybe her career we'll never know but I, I you know even in the way that she tells the stories and I think the playwright really does capture that extraordinarily well her sense of humor and uh, there's a sense of also this cavalier attitude she I think she did everything she wanted to do in her life. Stefan, so the other actor in the show with me is the extraordinary Stefan Terry, uh, who's my music director. He's also uh, my accompanist, Billy's accompanist on stage. And he also plays Jimmy Powers, uh, who is uh, in this show, uh, 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 Billy Holiday's companion at this stage in her life. And it's interesting that the playwright gave Jimmy Powers the same name as her first husband, uh, Jimmy Sonny Monroe. We call him Sonny in the show. Um, and sometimes during the show, by accident, she forgets and thinks it's her first husband, Sonny. And um, he's got this wonderful quiet strength and just a wonderful groundedness that I think plays so well in the intimacy and the tone of of the show and we also get to hear him sing and you know I keep saying we need to give this brother a show because he's got an amazing voice and and the feel and the spirit of his playing is is just it's it's just such a pleasure to sing and perform and be on stage and share uh, the stage and and uh, this give and take it's it's wonderful. Well, the, the relationship between the singer and the pianist uh, is inseparable. It's, it's as much a part of the storytelling as the dialogue and the words. Um, it's, it's really where uh, Billy lives her best life. She says it is living to her. So it's, it's, it's such a, an intricate part of this storytelling you know she this was her her gift to us and um and also coming down to just having a pianist and someone who's as talented as stefan terry and uh, also ren is this walking receptacle of music history even the style of playing and the, the way that there was a dialogue between the pianist and billy listening to some recordings of billy holiday she had this wonderful way of singing in the shorthand with her musician where she and the musicians are, are there she's singing in between 
the solos, especially the way that she and, for example, uh, Lester Young, the tenor saxophone player, it, it was like the same voice, you know, this breathing together, this this um, heartbeat of, of music, if you will. It's it's a it's a whole other uh, energy and entity of of itself of its own that that you're co-creating with someone so um and, and that's wonderful especially having the time to work with someone over a period of time you know you you begin to speak each other's language and and that's what's so so much fun what i would love for the audience to come away with from our production of lady day at emerson's bar and grill is just really a, a uh, a reaffirmation of this great artist that we were so blessed to have um, on this planet with us for the period of time for her two brief 44 years and to really see a triumphant human being Yes, she was a black woman. Yes, she was a woman who was addicted to drugs. Yes, she was a woman with an extraordinary voice. But she was a woman of such spirit and determination. And um, and to look at her with empathy. And maybe to get us to look differently at, at what is happening to other human beings like her, like me, like each other. Um, I think uh, it's important for us to share all of our stories to let us know that we're all in this together. You know, it's not, it's, it's not just the other, just because someone is different from you. You know, we're, we're born looking different. We come in with different skills and talents. And, and not, but just to see an example of what's possible, you know, when we connect with other human beings and... Uh, and, and I think theater is a great way, uh, as a great affirmation of our humanity and for so many different people to gather together in a live space to witness someone else's uh, journey, uh, tragic or hopeful or sad or, or joyous or profound. It's, it's a great affirmation of that, you know, we're all in this together. And, and to pay tribute to her and to celebrate her and, and, and just to be grateful that we had an artist like Billie Holiday. Why should Southern California communities come out and see Billie Holiday? She's one of the greatest artists we've had <laughs> of the 20th century. We're in the 21st century now. Uh, she's timeless. There was so much that I didn't know about her before doing this production. And my dad was a big jazz guy, so I listened to her growing up. It's, it's an exquisite production. Um, it's a wonderful evening of theater. It's a wonderful opportunity to celebrate this woman, to revisit, relive her music. It's timeless. It's, it's transcendent. And um, you're, you're just going to have a, a wonderful uh, experience out on the town. And, and if, if you don't go out too often, I know theater is a big deal to get out, get in your car, drive, pay for parking, get dinner if you're hungry, and, and sit down for 90 minutes. But uh, I, I know that you will be absolutely thrilled and glad you did. Uh, the reason I wanted to be part of this production, well, first of all, Ren, Ren Brown called me, and I'm an admirer of his work, and I've known him for some years now, and um, I couldn't say no to Ren. But also, once he told me, you know, about late, you know, about the story and all of that, I'm a big fan of Billie Holiday. I've done a show before about her music, and I just fell in love from the very, very first time I heard her music, songs like God Bless a Child. And so, you know, she's one of my... I would say musical heroes. He's actually promoted this event um, to this particular bar and trying to get her extra money. From what I understand, this is her third show of that night. And um, it was very typical of her sometimes after she's done a gig to go to these small spots with the pianist and do a gig and make some quick money. Um, and I won't say under the table money, but I'll say that, you know, these artists had to get it where they could, you know, and I think she was going through a tough time, uh, you know, in her career towards the, the, the latter end there. And so, you know, her pianist, Jimmy Powers, is looking out for her. Um, he, he, he cares about her. He works for her. And uh, he wants to make sure that she's taken care of. Jimmy Powers is um, kind of like her guardian angel at this point. He, um, he makes sure that she has everything she needs, that she's well-dressed for her, um, 
her gigs that musically you know she's she's in good voice he um she, even when she's dealing with um i would say even the legal stuff he, he wants to protect her he wants to protect billy and uh he loves her too he's also her lover and um and he he, he admires her um but at the same time he uh um, he just makes sure that that you know that she has what she needs at all times and he won't let her fall he won't let her fall and so um it's it's a as far as the story you, you know you see them coming in um doing this engagement at emerson's and as the i don't want to give away too much but as the story goes on you begin to see um even his heartfelt connection to her and, and he sees her go you know through different modes through different moods i want to say through um um as she, as she expresses her life story you know and her emotions and as she pours out her heart you, you know you can kind of see his um his his care for her and also his um just even his hurt at some of the things that she's had to go through and even as she is you know going through let's say some um some of the uh sadness um you know he feels her pain he definitely feels her pain and he he, empathi he empathizes with her um and 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 in some ways it's breaking his heart to even see her as she is um you know i would say I don't. I want to say descending, um, um, you know. And even with all of that, she's very triumphant in her um, in her artistry, and that, that's one of the things I loved about Billy too. Is no matter what she was going through, she was always pouring out to audiences, um, you know, and giving her best. And so, you know, if she was going to do it, she was going to do it. Um, and I'm sure, you know, whether it was you know relation relationship she was going through. Um, you know, whatever trouble she may have been encountering at the time, um, you know, racism or, or anything of that nature. Um, you know, she still found a way to to be there for so many people through her music. And she loved her music, absolutely loved her music. And so even with, with Jimmy Powers, you know, he makes sure that, hey, the, the, the show is still going on and everything is clicking and everything is right. All right. Because like I said, he's not going to let her fall. So jazz musicians. Um, and I do consider her a, her a musician, you know, you know, she she patterned her phrasing after horns, you know, and she was very musical. Um, her phrasing was amazing. But one thing about jazz musicians, they were always in the moment. You know, there was structure to their songs, but at the same time, there was so much feeling which they infused into their music. And so they could be feeling a certain way on a given on any given night and based on how they were feeling you know maybe what they went through that afternoon or the day before it would come out in their music you know and that's the beauty of, of jazz it's 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 alive it's not always the same way every time and so you have that improvisational aspect to it and even when you come to this play um, you're sitting in on their creativity happening in real time you know you, you will recognize some of the songs but at the same time, you know, we take on that spirit of, of jazz, you know, jazz musicians, of which I am already. And I understand that. And I love that. Um, and what it, it allows you to bring personality and different colors into the music as you feel them, you know. And um, and so, you know, and, and, and Billie Holiday was one of the best, one of the best ever to do that. And Carol, she's an awesome musician. Um, she's really taken this um, this artist, um, Lady Day, and um, really personified her spirit. And, uh, and, and, you know, Carol and I, we both love to work. And so, you know, we got together on the music. And at the same time, you know, she's taking experiences in her own life, Carol. Um, and I'm sure, you know, relating to Billy, you know, to Billy Holiday. And, um, you know, so it's, it's a wonderful thing to see. And you, and you see them even as she's telling her life story as, as Lady Day. You kind of see how the music comes in and almost echoes whatever she was just talking about. You know, the music personifies the story. And even when Jimmy Powers does a little number um, midway through the show, same deal. He's telling the story. You know, it's never just music and we're just performing. There's always a um, kind of biographical component that you hear in the music. So even the notes and even with her voice, she's expressing, you know, her journey. I don't know if Jimmy Powers is a real life person, but, you know, he can embody many pianists of that time. Now, as far as for Billy Holiday, is there any pressure? I'll put it like this. Um, it's a lot of respect and a lot of humility that you have to approach this kind of project with. Because she's such a, a legend and um, a transcendent talent, you have to um, do your due, your due diligence. You have to you know study the music. You have to get familiar with that era. Um, 
And you have to, you know, get into the spirit of it, as I'll say. Um, it, because I know some people, like they like, like to copy and all of that, but we didn't want to get into that. Uh, we wanted to more get into um, the actual feeling, their instinctive um, kind of traits. And so um, I don't see it as pressure. I personally see it as a joy to be able to explore this music and to live with it um, every day and then to present it to audiences. And so, you know... I'm a lover of music. I'm a, a great lover of jazz. And so to me, this was like an opportunity that I, I just could not pass up. And I relish it every day. I'm thankful for being a part of this, um, for Ren calling me and, and Karen and those guys trusting me, you know, with, with such a work. And I know um, as we as artists, as we enjoy the project, um, I know audiences will too. And so, you know, that's pretty much it. I think when you're doing even, even this kind of music and even jazz, um, you can't approach it from a pressure kind of standpoint. Uh, jazz musicians, especially that era, they're very cool. They're very um, uh, distinguished and royal in their nature. And so, you know, if you're going to embody all of that, you know, you got to, you know, you have to be, you have to have a certain vibe, right? And so, um, that that's my feeling on that. I want to say, part of her spirit is freedom. No matter what uh, the limitations were of even um, racial. Um, segregation and, and racism at that time and some of the it's really unfair um, situations that were going on even with her personally she was able to rise above it all as a queen and she was able to shine I mean you're talking about someone who was you know pretty much you know she raised herself you know and having to you know work in uh, uh, you know essentially you know whorehouses you know um, early on and, and uh, things that she's been through you know as a child as a child, you know, for her to overcome those circumstances, you know, to become what she became, I believe is one of the most triumphant stories um, ever. And even musically, what she was able to accomplish with no formal training, you know, she was really gifted. And even through, you know, abuse and things that she went through, she um, she maintained her love for the music, and I believe her love for audiences, um, and even dealing with, um, you know, maybe addiction and things of that nature, all of that, she still did not let it stop her from um, yeah, expressing, you know, expressing herself. She was one of the co-writers of, um, I want to say, no, God Bless a Child. And um, sometimes we don't give her her just due, um, you know, as a songwriter, as a creator. And even she revolutionized um, phrasing for singers. Um, and and her, her tone was so distinct. It was so different. Um, there's only one Lady Day. And, you know, people can try to copy. But when, when, when she put her thing on it, as I'll say, it was unforgettable. And, and sometimes even being like either a little bit ahead or behind, she kind of relaxed on it more on her phrasing. Um, and her sense of timing was incredible. And so to me, her as a... I feel like she would compose on the spot. You know, she would have the notes, but she would add her little, you know, like a, like a great um, jazz, you know, saxophone player or trumpeter. In. And I, I think that, you know, she will get, you know, uh, she needs to get more credit for that. And and I want to, you know, people know who she is, but I do believe there are, so, you know, so much going on today. So, you know, so many things out there in the media and all of that. I am excited about audiences now especially on the younger side you know I, I'm a teacher I teach you know a lot of youth being able to experience you know this great musician this great artist and understanding her contribution to music understanding her um, contribution even in business I mean she was one of the highest paid artists you know at one time you know doing so many big gigs Carnegie Hall and, and performing so many places so she was a to me she was also a trailblazer and and she would not um, let anybody tell her what she could it could not do and, and what she wasn't going to do. And so I, I know you asked me earlier about her spirit, defiant too, you know, very defiant. Um, she was not going to um, take no, you know, she wasn't going to just, um, you know, walk away. She was going to find her way in, you know, and even when they were trying to, you know, restrict her, she still found a way to, you know, to shine. Carol is amazing. Um, I, I saw her a little bit as she was working, you know, through her you know, with her voice and um, and even, you know, t speaking voice and even singing. 
And from the first time I was rehearsing with her, you could tell she was already in that in that mode. She was already, you know, getting it. And each day um, I've seen her just uh, grow even more into um, into the spirit of, of, of Billy Holiday. Um, you know, but one thing about Carol, she she's um, her her um, her portrayal is very real. It's very real. So. So she's expressing the heart of Billy through her music, um, and and you are, we already know that Carol's voice is absolutely amazing, and um, I know she's done so many other projects. Um, I saw her once in Porgy and Bess, and she was absolutely killing it, and um, and so I know what she can do. But to work with her, she's very easy to work with. Um, she makes it, you know, if she has any kind of, um, uh, well, I'll say this: she she allows. She allows me to, you know, create and, and, and kind of go back and forth with her, you know, between the piano and the voice. And it's a, it's a it's an awesome synergy there, um, you know. And, you know, to me, we, we flow. It's it's a very easy thing. It was it was never like a, 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 a tough kind of thing. It was very, very fluid. And um, and, you know, even with her with her gift, it challenged me to make sure I was at the top of my game in terms of preparing. And at the same time, there is a conversation going on musically. Um, between uh lady day and her you know pianist and so we had to you know get into that also and make sure that we're connected at all times so i'm watching her a lot and um you know she's um, she's a you know great musician in her own right and so if she goes here if she goes left i gotta go left if she goes right you know if she um is feeling something and i hear in her voice and i try to match that energy um with the piano um and sometimes i try to you know almost like um kind of offset things at certain times you know colors against what she's doing um and so you know i've had a lot of fun working with carol uh, she has a great spirit like i said um easy to work with very fun so we you know we enjoy the whole process too which i think makes the music you know um a lot easier and um that's pretty much it what do i want the audience to get out um of this production hmm i want the audience to go on a journey with us and to um to listen, to laugh, to cry if they feel like it, um, to um, really come with an open mind, an open heart. Even when, if you already know the story of Lady Day, there are definitely going to be some elements in this show that are going to move you in a way that, um, unlike before. Um, there are going to be some elements that are going to touch you. There's, gonna, there's a lot of history there. There's some things in her story that, um, that I've never heard before, but I learned in this particular uh, play. And so I, I think our audience is going to um, historically, you know, be educated, but also they're going to be moved in a very um, uh, profound way um, because even her humanity, just her her um, reaction and how she was able to respond to to, you know, her life's challenges and even. Um, you know, the challenges of that era is amazing to see. And I think audiences are going to leave here, I believe, having a, a, a new level of respect, understanding and admiration for Lady Day. Like I said, she's a legend. And to me, if you're a lover of music, she's had such a wide reaching influence on music not just jazz and so like if you have a favorite maybe r&b singer or pop singer trust me if you go back down the line they were influenced either by someone who was influenced by billy holiday or they were influenced directly by her and so to me it's, it's a musical story but it's also a great life story um and i think some of the things that are ha were happening in her time some of those things have come full circle and um and so i think uh, I think it's they, you know, there, there's a lot to be gained from coming to a show like this. And on top of it all, it's extremely entertaining. And one, that's one thing I love about Billy, too. And um, no, no matter what, she was always a great entertainer. And she hung with cats, jazz cats, who were the, you know, just the best entertainers around. They they knew what they were doing and they had a way of bringing style and flavor to the public. Um, to the point that you, if you saw them one time, you had to see them again. And they always left a mark on you. And so to me, even in these, you know, with all the music that's out here now, it's a great time for Southern California to come out and get familiarized with this era of jazz music.
what attracted me to be a part of Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill, uh, the love of the subject, Billie Holiday. Uh, an extraordinary career, an extraordinary life, uh, one of great dimension, and I was deeply, deeply attracted to that life and that career, and greatly impacted by her music all of my life. So it became a, a very easy yes for me when I was asked to be the director. It became a very, very immediate and easy yes. The Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill is very unique because of its intimacy. It is so intimate, and for this particular kind of work, you know, this is, we're playing this as a two-hander. There's a piano player, uh, the character is Jimmy Powers, and then, of course, uh, we have Billie Holiday, Lady Day. So there are two characters, and the intimacy of this work, the honesty in this work, uh, has an opportunity to immediately impact an audience because of the beautiful intimacy of the space. Billie Holiday is at this Bar and Grill, Emerson's Bar and Grill in South Philadelphia, because this was the last four months of her life. You know, this is the third week of March 1959. She dies in July of 1959. Uh, unfortunately, the career that had played the great houses of the world, frankly, she was an international star, but she was playing this club, and it was a club that was familiar to her, but at this time, the audience was very, very small. But there was something about the historical famili familiarity of playing this small house that she had a, a perennial kind of opportunity to come back and play. And she always loved the intimate houses. And so that's what we're dealing with re regarding Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill. Well, it, it's written as a play and a concert. Uh, it's been called a musical, but it really, for me, as the director, it's a play with music. She does concertize, if you will, within the parameters of the play, but there are an extraordinary number of monologues. There are elements of dialogue, but there are huge monologues where she talks about her life. She talks about the journey of her family, the journey of experiences on the road. She talks about uh, her relationships. And so it really is a tremendous play with music uh, and a lot of wonderful, wonderful, insightful monologues. Is there more pressure for someone playing a legend like Billie Holiday. Uh, no, I don't know that there's more pressure. The reality of it is, is that you always want to go into this work honoring the subject. Uh, you can improve upon what they did. We're not into mimicry. This is not uh, an impression. This is an extraordinary actress uh, attempting to access the essence of this great lady. And that's what we were, our goal was, frankly, in the rehearsal process, in the early conversations, was to make sure that we honored this life uh, because it was a life worthy of honor uh, 60 years after her death, as a matter of fact. Well, the musical director slash pianist, Jimmy Powers, is being played uh, by Stefan Terry, he's not only the musical director for the show, but he's the pianist and he plays the character of Jimmy Powers, the pianist to Billie Holiday. Stefan Terry is just a magnificent artist. He is a person who came out of jazz himself in his studies. Uh, he has worked deeply, deeply in the church. He works very closely with the Amazing Grace Conservatory where he teaches voice. And so everything that he does has come to bear in the role of Jimmy Powers and we're thrilled to have him without question. Uh, Billie Holiday is played by the inimitable Carol Foreman. I'm telling you, I have known Carol uh, for close to 30 years. We, we did a reading together as actors many years ago, but we've never had an opportunity to work together. And it is an absolutely sublime experience to come to rehearsal each day to watch this consummate artist do her work. Uh, I'm just honored and so proud uh, to have my name associated as director with her name because the performance that she gives and the day-to-day, -day, more than the performative element of what she gives each night, it's what we experience each day that has brought me such joy. The spirit of Billie Holiday is a triumphant spirit. Uh, the life, the person herself endured many greatly concussively impactful events in her life, but she was able to take all of these difficult moments and the moments of joy and put them right into her music. She was a consummate artist that way. She took what happened in her life and she placed it in the music. And so there are nights when the blues allegedly is a downer to some, but her blues often had such a joyful kind of spirit in it. Uh, she, her phrasing was impeccable. Her sense of timing was impeccable. She loved to really bother the tempo of things because it was depending on how she felt that evening, how she was feeling the 
visiting musicians, what the atmospheric conditions were uh, that night, whether the air condition was on or off. She used all of those things that were immediately around her in her art. And when we talk about the great artist of the world, she's in the pantheon of those because she was able to do that. And she was an international star dying at age 44, but being talked about and being portrayed 60 years after her death. The relationship musically between the pianist here in our show and Billie Holiday is a relationship that it means everything. There's a shorthand, there's a familiarity, there is a, a soft landing, knowing that there is a sense of safety because this man knows the artist, he knows the person, and he knows the music. And that's what's so important. It's not just about playing dots. It's really, really about knowing this person you're playing for, particularly for a singer. There has to be a great sensitivity uh, in the one doing the accompanying. So this relationship is deeply uh, investigated uh, by having two persons on stage. Oftentimes a trio is on stage, certain times there's a duo, but we really, really desire to have the piano player and Lady Day have a very, very close, immediate relationship to examine this particular work. What do I want the audience to get out of this production? That's always a very, very difficult question, uh, but I certainly want them to come with an open mind, an open heart, and an open spirit because we can be touched when we're open that way. Vulnerability is about access. It's not about weakness. And so I'm hopeful that an audience can come in here uh, with a kind of openness and a vulnerability that they then allow themselves to take this journey that we're presenting each night for about 92 minutes. And... Uh, go into the lobby, then go out into their cars and somehow ponder what they've experienced in such a way that perhaps they can then perhaps uh, promote some intentional civility to someone they encounter immediately following the performance. The Southern California community should come and see Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill because it is an examination of an extraordinary life, an extraordinary artist with two persons on stage who are absolutely brilliant. And I would suggest that you run and not walk to see the work that these two artists are doing on this stage.